What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me on my way into the office early in the morning, 5.45 in the morning. Uh, I love to see the city this early and it's been a really, really great place uh, to build that, man. It's so much happening in the city and so many people doing great things. But let me tap in with y'all and give y'all a little bit of insight of what I've observed over the last few years and what I see coming from a financial perspective. And hopefully you can relate to this from a financial perspective over the next few years, right? It's been a lot of people making a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money um, over these last few years, even since the pandemic, right? And what I seen people do was they didn't diversify. Now, I'm not a real big fan in diversification as far as assets. Um, like for example, when it comes to stocks, I don't think that you need to own 10 stocks, 20 stocks. I'm not a fan of day trading. I'm not a fan of Forex. I'm not a fan of options trading, none of that stuff, right? But when I say diversify, um, I'm saying that taking the money that you make in one thing and either reinvesting it back into what you got going on or how you got it in the first place or starting to put your money in the other things that'll make you money long term. So for example, you can make money at your job. And I think that the biggest investment that you can make it as an individual is in what you do for a living because you are your biggest asset. Um, you know, people get a job and then they just stay there or they stay there as long as they can or they get minimal raises because they hit a ceiling. And I think that that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make. First thing you should do is reinvest in yourself. And if you get in the bag and you've paid off your debt, ultimately, I think that the best investment that you can make is an education and even maybe pivoting into a different industry. If you work in a plant and I'm speaking from experience because I worked in the steel mills here uh, in the Metro Detroit area. If you work in the plant, if you work at Ford, Chrysler, GM, all of that stuff, or you get a decent job, right? A lot of times these jobs don't even require education. Uh, my biggest play, my biggest play was to go back to school and I was going to leverage uh, tuition assistance and leverage my own money. And it's okay to invest your own money. You don't have to get a grant. You don't have to get a Pell Grant. You don't have to get tuition assistance, but to leverage that and ultimately, you know, going to community college and then parlaying that and then going into a major university so that I can minimize the amount of money that I was spending on credit hours, especially for general education, and then pivot into software engineering, which has made me a crazy amount of money, right? And then you parlay that and, and you start to use that money to go into uh, your businesses and you wanna fund all of your businesses and the ventures that you got going on. It's never time to start buying luxury cars unless you hit a number. You gotta set that boundary and hit that number before you start blowing the money and blowing it on cars and watches and all of the luxuries and traveling. And that's why I say a lot of time to my chasers, you need to stay down for 10 years. And I know it seemed like a long time, but y'all 10 years go by like that. You stay down for 10 years by the time you're in your mid thirties, you balling. Or if you start off in your thirties and you by the time you're in your forties, you good because they always say that it's hardest to make the first hundred thousand to make the first, the first million to stack the first hundred thousand to stack the first million from there on out. It's just reinvesting the money, reinvesting a large portion of the profits. You know what I'm saying? You could take some, spend it and have a good time. And then all the rest of it, it just reinvest, reinvests back into itself and then it compounds over a period of time. And that's how you really get rich. But a lot of people, they like to take the money and then they adjust their lifestyle to whatever it is that they make and whatever, whatever it is that they generate and like they're an NBA player or something. And that's why most of them dudes go broke by the time that they hit five years in the league or that five years removed from the league. You're not gonna make that type of money forever, but you wanna be in a position to make even more than that and the only way you can do that is by reinvesting in, in, in yourself and in assets, right? And so they always spend what they make instead of taking a majority of what they generating and then putting that into other things that's ultimately gonna pay off for them for the rest of their life. But it's easy to do that because you know you get the big contracts or you get the big money, you know, and for, for the majority of us, you might run into some money or run into a windfall and then what they do, the first thing that they do, they go out and they go and get a car. Or you go out, you go get a chain. You go out and you go run it up on some silly shit. 
And that stuff is going to be outdated within the next few years and it's going to be a replacement for it and nobody's going to care about it and you're going to be back to the where you was and don't nobody ever want to go back to where they was, you know what I'm saying? So I think that the first thing that you got to do is A, reinvest back into yourself, B, pay off debt, C, make sure that you pivot into the industries that's going to be long term sustainable. So for me, for example, I'm in an industry and I'm all money in, so you know I'm always going to get that corporate money, I'm going to get that business money, I'm going to get that real estate money, I'm going to get that uh, web development money, I'm going to get that uh, YouTube money, I'm going to get the sponsorship, I'm going to get out all the dollars, right? And so, um, you know, you're supposed to take that money and you pivot. So the next game then becomes a tax game because you make enough money then you got to give enough money over to Uncle Sam or if you owe enough money over to Uncle, Uncle Sam, year two, when you're doing that same number or bigger, you're like, we're not going to do this again. So then that's when you pivot. And that's when you decide, you know what? I need to make sure that I run it up and then I got to make sure that I take care of my people because I want to sustain this lifestyle for the rest of my life. And then that's when you start to invest in other things that mean something, right? You start to put your money into the real estate market, but you don't just you know, try to get doors. You want to make sure that you own everything. So that's why you deploy all of your resources into buying it up. And then whenever it's a discount or it's a dip in the market and you still running that bag up, that's when you triple down and you really get rich because you start to be able to be in a buying position where everybody else is under duress. Some of the properties that I bought came as a result of somebody going through a divorce. Um, I was flush, you know, as far as being liquid and, um, you know, got hit up by the real estate agent, by her real estate agent, who I, who also is somebody that I've done business with in the past. Anton, she going through a divorce. She just got, you know what I'm saying? These three properties, um, first person that I call, she'll let her go for this, come and do your due diligence and let me know what you want to do. Um, if you buy two of them, she'll give you a massive discount on the third one and uh, go from there. She wanted to go off and parlay with her boyfriend. She didn't want to own no real estate. She didn't want to be in that type of game. You know, I'm sure her husband was mad about it, but that ain't my problem. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how the rich really get rich is that they they leverage their assets to, or they leverage the amount of money that they make. And as far as the, them reinvesting in themselves and generating a lot of a lot of revenue and having these windfalls um, and then they run it up, they really run it up. But it's what you do with the money once you get it, not whether or not you generate a lot of revenue. And so many people, they are misguided because they think it's about how much you make. No, it's about how much you invest. It's not even about how much you keep. It's about how much you invest. Because you're not even beating the rate of inflation. And what I see happening in the coming years is I see a lot of people suffering. And when I say suffering, I mean suffering. I don't think that um, this economy is going to be able to sustain itself. Um, and we just we just sitting on a house of cars. I think it's going to be a, a massive correction over the next few years. Maybe even not even the next few years, maybe five to ten years. But it's always feast and then famine. And then, you know, and as a result of all of the stuff that, that, that you generate, there has to be a market correction and there has to be a comeback down to reality because you can't sustain that level of growth without it being a correction. And I think that it's a massive correction. One of the biggest corrections are yet to come. And most people are not going to be in a position to really take advantage of it. And more importantly, it's going to be a bunch of people suffering and they're going to be in survival mode. And you don't want to be in survival mode because when you're in survival mode, you start to do desperate shit um, in order to be able to survive. You know what I'm saying? So listen, I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Um, also on top of that, Tej Hanley, 40% off your first order plus 20% off of life. Uh, that's the Anton Daniels discount. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all get both of those down in the description. We're doing a meetup in Houston. And then be smart. Be smart about your investments. Be smart about how it is that you're moving. Um, and don't be so easily uh, impressed and swayed to spend your money when you first get it on things that don't necessarily add value into your life. Parlay that. Finesse that. Flip that. And have a, have a hustler's mentality, not just when it comes to making money, but how much you can make money as a result of making smart decisions with your money. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.